Welcome to ForexTV.com. It's Wednesday, February 27th. I'm Remy Hokey for your New York Forex Market Buzz. In afternoon trade as of 1.05 p.m. Eastern Time, Euro dollar is at 1 and 51.23. Sterling dollar is trading at 1 and 98.89, while dollar yen is around the 106.50 level. U.S. equities have rebounded today following Fed Chairman Bernanke's comments. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar fell to its lowest on record since 1973. Taking a look at U.S. data, the Commerce Department reported that durable goods tumble 5.3 percent, the most in five months, and also ex-transportation, the figure fell 1.6 percent. Meanwhile, new home sales declined for the third consecutive month in January. The Commerce Department reported that the figure fell 2.8 percent to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 588,000 units. That is the weakest since February of 1995, and the median price of a new home fell to its lowest in over three years. This afternoon, I'm joined by George Davis from RBC Capital Markets. Good afternoon, George. Good afternoon, Remy. Thanks for joining us on this very volatile day. Thank you for having me on. Well, first and foremost, the U.S. dollar has weakened to record lows against the euro as well as Kiwi, and the majors have extended gains against the U.S. currency. But with so much going on in the FX, equities, as well as commodities, let's start out by looking at the bigger picture. So following uh, Bernanke's comments today and weaker than expected U.S. data, will the U.S. dollar be on the defensive? Yeah, that, that appears to be the case. I mean, I think we've, we've seen the U.S. dollar um, weaken quite dramatically over the past two trading days. And I think the, the, the recent economic data uh, that we have uh, seen out of the United States uh, continues to show uh, a weaker than expected uh, results. And also, as you mentioned, uh, Bernanke's semi-annual testimony that started today, uh, he still retained a very dovish um, outlook um, with regards to monetary policy. And, and you know, there's still uh, indication of some downside risks for the U.S. economy. So I think from a bigger picture perspective, that is likely to keep the U.S. dollar uh, under pressure for the time being, and I think it's relevant in the context that uh, yesterday we saw the euro um, break above some important uh, resistance levels above the 149.60 area uh, to trade above the psychological 150 level. So I think that's indicative of, of the bearish market sentiment that's out there right now for the U.S. dollar. Well, George, let's move on to price action for euro dollar. As you mentioned, in the past 24 hours, we've been seeing significant moves in the pair. And uh, euro dollar not only surpassed 150, but so far hit a session high today at 1 and 51.43. So technically, um, what are your charts telling you and where do we go from here? Well, right now, I think uh, the, the, the breakout above the 149.60 area is very significant. We've, uh, we've basically uh, tested that level uh, three times since last November, and the fact that we've finally been able to, to, uh, to trade above that price level, uh, again, I think is symptomatic of overall uh, bearish market sentiment towards the U.S. dollar. And I think in terms of the technical picture right now, we've got uh, support that comes in at 148.85. I think that is likely to contain pullbacks. Uh, and the next top side price level that I think uh, people should take a look at now uh, is the 153 area, uh, which is the top of an ascending channel pattern for euro dollar. Okay, let's shift our focus over to the U.S. currency. Uh, sterling has remained firm and has strengthened against the U.S. currency. Uh, earlier today, UK Q4 GDP came in at an unrevised 0.6 percent, but US, uh, UK fundamentals have not been uh, strong. But as cable edges closer to the $2 handle, technically and fundamentally, what's your uh, forecast for the UK currency? Well, in terms of the uh, in terms of the fundamental view right now, uh, I think we're getting a little bit of a, a more mixed picture than the market has originally expected in the sense that if we go back two or three weeks ago, we saw sterling under extreme selling pressure uh, with sterling dollar moving down towards the 193.5, 194 area. And I think at that point in time, uh, the market was looking for some near-term rate cuts from the Bank of England uh, as a result of some weaker economic data. Now, since then, uh, not only have we had this broader based pattern of U.S. dollar weakness, but we've also seen some more mixed data in the U.K. in the sense that we haven't just seen uh, uh, simply uh, a number of weak economic uh, reports out of the U.K. Uh, we have seen some, some stronger reports as well. So I think it's got the market um, questioning whether or not we're going to get a rate cut at the next uh, Bank of England meeting. And, and I think right now um, we are seeing a little bit of short covering drive stir higher as a result of that. And from a technical 
perspective right now, um, the market is starting to get a little bit overbought uh, as we approach initial resistance at 199.56. So I, I think basically between the, the, uh, the psychological 2 level and 201, uh, I think we're probably going to run into some selling pressure at that point, and the rally in sterling uh, will likely lose at least some short-term momentum uh, for a bit of a retracement. Okay, and George, last but not least, I want to get your take on dollar yen and the yen crosses, uh, including euro yen and Aussie yen. We have been seeing Aussie dollar rally and Kiwi dollar hit record highs. Um, so what are we seeing in the crosses and tell us what levels investors need to be paying attention to. Yeah, in terms of the crosses right now, again, the main themes that are that are driving the price action um, with reference to most of these crosses has been uh, the performance in equity markets and the performance in commodity markets. Uh, when we get uh, a rally in equity markets like we've had for the past few days, uh, risk aversion does decrease, and that tends to be bullish for, for euro yen, for example. And obviously the firm commodity prices um, that we've seen across the board uh, are bullish for the commodity currencies such as the Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar and Kiwi. Uh, now looking at the um, support and resistance levels, um, for dollar yen right now we are seeing uh, a downside bias uh, in the pair. We've got resistance at 108.09 and support at 105.05 is the next major downside price level to focus on. In euro yen, uh, we've got a top side bias in place right now with equities rallying and risk aversion declining. We've got support at 159.51, which is likely to attract some short-term buying interest, and the next resistance level comes in at 162.29. And when we look at Aussie Yen, uh, we've got support coming in at 98.16, with resistance at 101.10, and the bias there is to the top side given the strength of commodity markets and hence the Australian dollar. Okay, George, thank you very much for insight and analysis into the Forex Marketplace. You're very welcome. This has been your Forex Market Buzz with George Davis from RBC Capital Markets. I'm Remy Hokey. Join us later this afternoon for PM Exchange right here on ForexTV.com.